All right, guys, welcome to the channel Automatic Transmission. My name is Hiram, and here we have a 700 R4. Now, I don't have a video on a 700 R4 rebuild, so this is going to be a 700 R4 full rebuild video. First, like, like always, uh, we remove everything from the outside, and then we start going in. As you can see, we still have the filler tube. This is on a pickup truck and it's going to be a little bit hard to take off i should have taken it off before but here we go so that's our filler tube off of the truck i believe this is a 1988 or 89 pickup truck as you can see this is where the uh throttle cable goes there the tv cable throttle valve cable we have our governor output speed sensor or manual linkage this is off of a truck, Chevrolet truck. All right, I turned the fan off uh, just so you guys don't complain about background noise. It's June in Texas, almost July. In a couple of, in a week and a half, it's gonna be July. It's hot and humid, so we're gonna go quickly here. When on the building process, it takes longer, so I'm gonna have the fan on, and I'm sorry guys, I mean, it's a, it is what it is. So the fan is off, so I'm going to be dripping sweat here in a minute because I barely just turned it off now. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do here, we're going to go around it and we're going to take or remove everything from external. And the first thing I am going to do, I'm going to pop off the uh, governor cover. And what I do, I get my screwdriver and I just tap it. Now it's kind of hard to do in angles that you're not used to doing it because you want to show it in the camera. So you just tap this thing. You know, in a few, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit, just on the cap itself. All right, let's go a little more. All right, I think that's going to be good. Just tap it. Tap it a little more on the edge. You gotta be careful on the edge there we go it just popped off and as you can see here it doesn't have an o-ring it should take an o-ring it has some type of a sealant on it it looks like that creepy yellow weather stripping uh, sealant remove that and here is here is our governor I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out and here is our governor it has a governor valve and to check it if you see this the valve in here we're gonna open and close it and the valve should go up and down and it doesn't it's stuck now it does as you can see right here it's supposed to fall on its own weight it was stuck you just tap it a little bit like I did and you get it undone. But we're gonna put a new governor gear on this thing. We're gonna re remove the valve. We're gonna use our bench buddy on the inside of the of the of the bore, governor bore, and we're gonna get a, a thousand grit sandpaper and just smooth out or polish that valve. Alright. In order to take this bolt off, we need to take the speed sensor off, and sometimes the speed sensor is stuck on there really, really good. And you have to get a 15 millimeter wrench and then just pop the speed sensor from the inside. That's a 10 millimeter bolt. And we're going to get some pliers and slowly twist, twist and pull. There we go. Came out good. Speed sensor, vehicle speed sensor. There's a lot of black stuff in there. Look at that. Well, I got black gloves. I mean, I don't have my orange gloves. I don't know, with the pandemic and all that, you know, uh, gloves are hard to find nowadays, but whenever I find gloves, I buy the case. 15 millimeter socket. Remove the extension housing. When you're doing a full rebuild, it's easier just to take the, the seals off, you know, where, where, before you disassemble, because it's nice and supported. Uh, I mean, I could do that now, but 
I want to do that later. Extension housing. Extension housing seal. It's a square or a lathe cut seal. Put this to the side, out of the way. I'm already sweating. All right, so this one here was leaking out of the yoke and uh, it's, it's cracked where the O-ring goes. And I was told that it was leaking from there and to see if I could get a new one of these because they had the extension housing off and I guess they tried to repair it and it was, it's all chewed up. And right here, there's a crack on this thing. So it was leaking out of the yoke. So this is what seals the yokes that have a breather on it, which is a little hole. Or you can eliminate this and change the yoke to a no hole yoke, which they are available because some of them, the output shaft is just like this. And on some of them, the output shaft has the breather on it. I don't know why GM did uh, those two configurations. So we use a 15 millimeter socket, remove the 15 millimeter nut, remove our linkage because we need to replace that seal on the overhaul. The cable's already been removed. You know, the bolt is right here. And the filler tube boot, completely gone as you can see that. It's all tore up. All right, now we're gonna remove our pump bolts off. And then after that, we're gonna go ahead and, uh, is that a good shot? Yeah, that's a good shot. It's a 13 millimeter socket. Battery's going dead on this thing. Let me get another battery right quick. Put this to charge. Get in there. All right. Where were we? Thirteen millimeter bolts. Get that out of the way. These bolts have O-rings on them. If you saw, I mean, if you've already watched my 4L60E full rebuild or the 4L65E full rebuild video, uh, you know that they take an O-ring. The old 83 and 84 model, they have a washer here instead of a O-ring like this. And this is a 80... I forgot the year of it. It's a pickup truck. But it's, a, it, it's, it's pre-92. Flip it over. Let the fluid drip a little bit. I see that he has a 10 millimeter bolt there. Probably lost uh, one of the bolts. Which is no big deal. This is actually a 4R70W bolt. Pan bolt. It's the same thread as the 4L60. So they are interchangeable. The rest of them are 13 millimeter bolts. All right. Now, transmission benches, they have a drain in the back with the hole in the center. You put a five gallon bucket underneath and all the fluid drains to the rear and they are on an angle just so you know I know that a lot of people ask me about the benches I mean they're professional transmission repair benches I mean you can probably fabricate your own if you want to it is burnt up as you can see and history on the truck in the Houston area we have a lot of flooding everywhere and supposedly Oh, here's that pan bolt that was missing. <laughs> what the what? Yep, right there. So the missing pan bolt. All right, well, I guess we can put that 10 millimeter on there. You know, make the outside, the pan look, you know, good enough. Pan gasket. We can deal with that later. So basically that's a 13 millimeter uh, bolt that you take off off of that as you can see uh, this one has an auxiliary valve body 
the uh, 83, 84, and some 85s don't have it. 86, I think it's 86 to 93, they added an, an auxiliary valve body. And then in between the years from 85 to 86 or 87, there were some changes on the plate. So you have to be careful on the check ball locations. And uh, I have a video uh, showing uh, and that you can eliminate most of the check balls and you have to leave the most important check balls on there and it does pretty good i mean i've done that for years and years and years and and uh what happens is that sometimes the valve body is wore out uh, or the governor or the governor bore itself on the case that even you adjust the thro the throttle valve cable and you cannot control the shifts or sometimes he will not shift into overdrive uh, you eliminate most of the check balls and you just leave the check balls that uh uh that are required 100 percent required and you eliminate that issue so sometimes you're done with your overhaul and then all of a sudden you're having issues and you're trying to you know look for the problem even though you install a shift correction kit whether it be a transgo or a superior or a b &M or whatever uh, and then you still have some issues get you eliminate some check balls and you fix the problem torque converter clutch solenoid it, it has a retaining bracket for the harness right here uh, and then you have the pass through case connector this one has a tab broken already so we're just going to pull on it it's missing so this this unit 700 r4s you're going to find like things like that missing uh bolts where they don't belong uh 700 r4 they have issues and they don't last well some of them they do if you uh, uh make sure that your throttle cable uh, doesn't uh it's always connected it sometimes the tip where it, where it goes on the linkage on the either the carburetor or the throttle body it disintegrates and falls off it, and then you start uh feeling some uh, early shifting concerns and stuff like that that causes premature wear because you're no longer controlling the throttle valve which is this one right here and when you accelerate you boost pressure this is the tv uh, throttle valve cable so the more you're on the on the throttle the later it will shift and the more pressure it will hold uh you know because you need to build up pressure uh if you're uh, accelerating so that's that's what it is there for if you're missing that input it's a mechanical input on the electronics is your throttle position sensor and uh and not only the throttle position sensor but you have the map sensor and the master flow sensor which are your load inputs and in this cable your load input input is your cable and your foot on the accelerator i don't know if i'm making myself clear but all of that is very very important these are mechanical inputs and on the electronic unit mass airflow sensor map sensor throttle position sensor has a lot to do with how the transmission behaves so if you have issues there the transmission is going to misbehave it's not going to act right just so you'll know so this has a uh, mechanical input and the governor has weights so the governor works by inertia. This is spinning and the weight's open. There's pressure from the throttle valve and the governor. They, they act together. This goes by speed or rotational speed inertia. And this goes by, uh, by your foot on the accelerator. And both work together, you know, for a combination of pressure, your shift points. You want to make this shift a little later you need lighter weights you change the springs and there's a lot of things you can do a lot of things you can do to control the shift so we get the harness out that crossover tube goes to the forward clutch drum uh, for forward clutch you have a forward clutch accumulator here uh, because back in the day the 83s and the 84 models they didn't have no uh, weight plates on it you put it in drive and boom it will have a harsh engagement which is uh was normal back then that's the way they were built All right. This is the uh, mechanism for the throttle valve. 
take that off the way so you won't be in the way and sometimes you get stuck on that roll pin but as you can see here let me show you how it goes so you can see this little wire clip right here and the wire clip has a little shape to it and the shape to it see how it is right there you can install it wrong and cause some shifts if you put it on the outside like I just did right now this one goes on the inside oh, come on now like this am I showing it right like that it goes on the inside it pulls like that you put it backwards it's gonna bind up either you're gonna have extremely late shifts or the transmission won't shift or you're gonna have some issues this is the one two accumulator piston housing it houses the one two accumulator piston that's where the piston lives and oh I see one two accumulator is blocked blocked off it looks like uh, B&M does this I mean I'll, let's take the accumulator piston off uh, if it has a little piece of tube in there probably it's probably a B&M shift kit which it does and it has a double accumulator so uh, B&M has a little pipe it's like a little piece of tube a little pipe that uh, let me remove the d-ring off of this oh there's no d-ring off of this one he had it in the bottom okay so this was blocked all the way to the bottom so on the b and m's gaskets in the way we just pull it away it locks the accumulator all the way to the top you know almost flush like that it's going to fall down because there's nothing in there but that's the way you want extremely hard one two on 700 r4 this is what you do you you block it to the top let's go ahead and put the d-ring back on this thing one of them had one and the other one didn't and this one looked like it's a new accumulator piston and this is the original one so they put two one on top of the other to block it you can go this way as well i mean that's no big deal uh, but if you do this, I mean, just make sure that both of them had a, have a seal on it. Always check, before I forget, that you have no scoring. Sometimes the accumulator uh, pinhole, it, it egg shapes and it wobbles, and then the piston rocks uh, sideways and it scratches the, the one-two accumulator piston housing. If that's the case, then you need to replace it with a new one. All right, uh, 10 millimeter bolt, they're all 10s. You have a, a temperature sensor. This is a temperature sensor for a torque converter clutch uh, control. Uh, you have a, a pressure switch here, a third clutch pressure switch. So it uses this and then you have a feedback going to the, uh, to the PCM because this is a fuel injected model uh, to control torque converter clutch ply. Let's go ahead and take everything off. This center bolt has this little big, this big washer right here, and that's just to hold the harness when it goes through. As you saw that I went underneath and it was already cracked and broken. Let's go ahead and take that off, all, all the bolts. This valve body is gonna be a two check, check ball valve body if they're there, because a lot of builders do what I do sometimes and uh, eliminate check balls. So we'll see how many check balls are in this valve body. Okay, so you want to put the impact here, isn't that in the way? Yeah, let's go ahead and put it over there. All right, let me see if I can put the hammer down here so it won't roll. I'm going to try and lift it up without the check balls rolling away, which they are going to roll away. Uh, they didn't but I'm stuck over here now there we go so you can see there's two check balls one here one here and yes it did have there's some rust so it did have some water and it was flushed 
but whenever you have water or coolant inside of a transmission and it overheats, the gasket gets stuck either to the valve body or the spacer plate or the case. And as you can see, it's really, really stuck here. But one of the check valves goes here and the other one goes here. Now the, we're go, we are going to install the shift kit on this one. It's going to be a Transgo uh, brand and it's going to be just a junior kit. A small kit is not going to be a performance kit. And there's some upgrades that we're going to do inside the unit. The valve body right here. There's some upgrades we're going to do inside the unit. Some frictions and stuff like that. I'll show you that. One, two accumulator housing. Not the one, two, the forward accumulator housing. And this one has a check ball. This is one of the check balls. It had a one eight and two tens. So this check ball is required. You can eliminate those two, but this one is required. The forward accumulator check ball. Uh, let's go ahead and take the bolts out. Now, as you saw, I already threw it in the basket over here. The head of the bolt from here and the head of the bolts from here, they are the same. They look the same, but the length of the bolts are not. As you can see, I have them both there. The longer ones are for the accumulator cover. And the short one is for the accumulator body. So these three are longer than that one. Just so you know, one to accumulator, I mean the one to accumulator, forward accumulator, return spring. Now this should have been a, a one to accumulator return spring on the one to accumulator piston housing, but there was not, as you saw, you found two accumulator pistons stacked one on top of the other. And this is what cushions and the forward wavy, it cushions your forward engagement. So you will have, you put it in drive and it's like nice, smooth and comfort, which a lot of people like and a lot of people don't. A lot of people like to feel the engagements. A lot of people like to feel the shifts as well. And some people don't. So it's just a matter of taste. We got metal on the gasket a little bit. That's fine. All right. Check balls in the case. Normally, you will have a big check ball here, which is it's not here. Every builder that I know takes them off. I do too. This one is on a bathtub. This is required. There's another bathtub right here, and it is required if your spacer plate has two holes, like this, right here. Here's the shape of the bathtub, and you have two holes. If you have two holes in a bathtub, it requires a check ball. Now let's look at the other side, the other bathtub. Here's the shape of the bathtub, and you have a square. This one does not take a check ball. On the other side, the valve body has also a bathtub. And you can see the impression because he has some rust on it, you know, because of the water contamination. Here is the shape of the bathtub. Here is the square. There is no other hole here, so the valve body does not take the check ball there. Let me get the valve body closer to you guys. All right. Cast iron is a little heavy. So here is the bathtub on the valve body. 84 and 85 models have two holes. It takes a check ball here, check ball there, and a check ball on the valve body. 83s and 84 models some 85s as well. So you gotta pay attention. Corvettes have an extra check ball. This is the 2-3 accumulator piston and the 2-3 accumulator uh, spring. And it looks like they've been replaced, replaced. they're new. But with the 2-3 accumulator pin, you can check all your accumulators. The way you do that, you put it in here and then you go sideways 
sideways to see if you have any play and of course this is not going to have any play it, it, it feels new but if you do have play you got to replace that accumulator or if you want to be on the safe side just put all three of them new all right so we got one two three and four well there's no check ball here but there's the check ball here there's another captured check ball here which is missing as well it's missing the governor filter and it's missing the filter that it goes here sometimes it comes in the overhaul kit and sometimes it doesn't you know there's two filters but if they come in your overhaul kit and you don't have them put them on all right so on that video that i show i only use the required bathtub check balls which is this one and that's it if like on this model you can get rid of this one that one that one and the two that you saw that were on the valve body you can get rid of all those check balls and just leave this one in and i promise you i mean i've done this hundreds of times uh when you have shifting issues they get corrected a lot of people are nervous about it because i mean they never done it and some transmission builders they they have a lot of a year's experience i mean they'll say yeah i've done it you know it works good and some other builders they never heard of it so i mean it's just i guess uh who you ask you know so this is uh 13 millimeter bolts always take off just like the 4l60s you take i take this off and then i just so that my uh parking pole jumps to the outside so that I can get the low reverse piston out. I think there's something going on with my impact wrench. That's another battery and it feels like all of a sudden the battery is a little bit worn or dead. Get over there. All right. Now, let's pop the pump out. Well, this screwdriver is a little bit small, but it'll it'll pop out hold on let me get the other one there is a pump puller I mean you can get a pump puller or just pop it out like this and having water contamination I think it is not gonna come out easy there we go all right so it came out not as easy as i would like to but usually they pop right out as you can see from here down from here on for those of you that have watched the video on the uh, 4l60s or the 4l65s from here on down it's all the same all right let's go ahead and take the pump apart Thirteen millimeter bolts, just like uh, them other units. Flip it over. Always inspect your surface area here, which is in really, really good shape. On the inside, the bushings they wear, and you just make sure that inside you don't have no ring cut, or not ring cut, but where the ring goes, the ring doesn't really cut the 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 stator uh, tube it's where the uh, the two ridges that hold the uh, the ceiling ring in that's what cuts it so but it's called ring cut because it's called ring cut because on the older uh units that have a uh, metal ceiling rings uh, some of the ceiling rings the material they used to uh cut the drums pump washer looks very familiar huh okay all right this is a 10 vein uh, pump rotor one two three four five six seven eight nine ten uh, the earlier models have eight i believe and then the 4l60s the pwm ones have 13 vein pump rotors expander ring vein expander ring it looks in good shape sometimes it wears out and you can feel the sharpness on the edge and this one is in very good shape take your pump veins out and you inspect them for wear as well sometimes you will feel 
like a little step right here if you feel a step where the expanders go then you need to replace it but you'll see the pump slide as well if the pump slide is is shiny then you have wear on both not only on the on the pump slide but also on your pump vanes all right pump rotor another pump expander ring goes on the bottom you got one on the bottom you got one on the top then you have your pump rotor guide sometimes this gets extremely overheated and it starts cracking and shaping off this is what centers the rotor on the pump pocket it centers it and of course I mean you have the pump bushing and of course you have the torque converter all right now let's check our pump slide yeah we need to put a pump slide on this thing there's no uh, ridges or marks or anything on the slide but it's no longer black it's shiny not really really shiny shiny but you can still see a little bit of the blackness color here a little bit right there but the rest of it is almost gone so this is your uh, pump slide uh, booster springs an inner and an outer you got to put both of them on on the earlier models 83s and 84 only one of them goes in there you always upgrade those to a double spring like that let's take our pump slide out here is the uh, pump slide sle uh, seal and then in the, uh, the bottom there's like a little rubber piece which is acts as a spring you know it's uh it's made out of rubber but right now it's completely square it's supposed to be round but it is completely square i have black gloves i mean you ain't gonna be able to see it so there we go these two come in the overhaul kit drop them in there there's a ceiling ring here that you reuse but underneath here there is a uh, o-ring and we'll talk about that on the build process you have your pivot pin you inspect your pivot pin make sure it's not worn sometimes you have a sometimes you have a, a big step on it this one is good all the way through the pivot pin and then you have the pivot pin spring don't lose this always put it if you have a magnet on your bench always put it on a magnet always have a magnet close to you and just set it on the bench you don't want to lose that then you have your pump uh, bushing front seal front seal retainer as you can see we might have an issue with the flywheel I want you to look at the bushing where it looks nice and black over here which is uh, it's kind of new and then right here is wore out so we need to inspect the flywheel as well make sure it's not warped and make sure that it has both dial pins if you don't have both dial pins on the bell housing you're going to cause uh, pump bushing wear and it's going to be leaking out the front you're going to have a uh, front pump seal leaks now the band is still attached i'm going to zoom in because some of you guys on the other videos they you, Y'all say that you can't see. Okay, so I, can, I think that's the best I can do. So you have the pump, I mean the pump, the, uh, the band anchor uh, pin up here, and the band anchor seam to that, and then you have your band fingers over here, one on top and one on the bottom. 700 R4s, the red bands, sometimes some of them only had one finger. But you just undo it like this and then get that out of the way. You get that out of the way. And now you can pull your drum assembly out. And there we go. This is what water contamination does to your transmissions. 
See how it debonds right there? A lot of people say, well, I just flushed mine three or four times, you know, and it's still working. A month later, it quits working, and that's what water contamination does. The friction lining is glued to the metal, and it takes a special bonding procedure, you know, from the manufacturer to, I mean, to manufacture the bands and the frictions. Uh, but this glue right here, if you have water or cooling contamination, it just destroys the bonding, and this, this happens. Friction falls off. So, if you've been underwater, here's another piece of the band. If you've been underwater, you already know what's going to happen. Because it is going to happen. It's just a matter of when. Forward sun gear. I'm going to set it right here. Let's go ahead and disassemble that. This is the reverse drum. And I forgot to bring, it looks in really, really good shape. Let me bring the uh, straight edge. Because sometimes they look good and then you put your straight edge on it. And you get a big surprise. And if it didn't have no water, well, the band was a little bit burned. So if you didn't have any water contamination, all right, so get our straight edge situated there. And we're going to put some light behind it. And as you can see, there is no light passing through it there's very little light passing through it this thing is straight it's straight enough it is straight you will see the ones that are no good I mean there will be there will be warp like that and sometimes you call it you call that blossoming sometimes the, the drum itself from here it blossoms out on performance uh, trucks or performance transmissions that I've done they get so blossom from here, then they, they start cutting into the case, you know, uh, where this thing is just like blossomed out. This meets the sun shell. I'll show you in a minute. All right, so where's my pick? Let's go ahead and remove our frictions from our reverse input drum. It's been built before. I mean, you can see that these clutches, they look in good shape like if it's been built before. Uh, but of course you got water contamination. 87 and up, I believe. You have the wavy like this, like the 4L60E. And, well this one has, is it a square hole or a round hole? It's a round hole. This is an early model, round hole. Uh, you have to be careful here because you will lose reverse as well if you put the wrong stator and drum combination. This one has a big hole, so we can use a big hole and a big hole for the reverse drum. All right, let's remove our input shaft bearing, input shaft to stator support. Always put some pressure on it and make sure that your bearing is good. If you are in question, Install a new one. The spacer. Put it here so you can see better. The spacer. These are selective. They have numbers on it. You can see there. And you adjust your uh, input clearance with these shims. Three, four clutches. Three, four frictions. Always look for your snap ring opening. Where's it at? It's right here. Uh, it's kind of hard trying to do it in a location so that you can, you can, you guys can see, you can watch. Usually it takes me no time getting these things disassembled. I would have been throwing all the parts in the cooker by now. They'll be half washed already. All right, before snap ring. That could be selective if you want to. They are selective. Three fours, burn up, completely burn up. This is totally different than a 700R4, I mean than a 4L60E. 
but we're gonna do something different with this unit and the 3-4 clutch bag we're gonna improve it these are the load springs there is a discrepancy on if you put them on or you leave them off or uh, do you really need them do you really not need them uh, on some seminars we were told not to use them and then uh, some other information says okay you can you, you can put them back on but I have my own personal opinion on those things and when, when I'm building it back when I'm doing the rebuild I will explain that to you and that's just gonna be my opinion and uh, and it is what it is the sprag to input drum bearing this goes here put some pressure on it make sure it's not bad as a matter of fact I have a uh, front planet that has a bat bearing I think I'm gonna do a tails from the bench video with that planet I'll bring in I put my mic on it my microphone on it close to it and then I'll, I'll show you what I mean this clutches look brand new forward clutches look at this brand new so this dimension was rebuilt but you cannot use this clutches though you'll be tempted to remember it has water in it. it has water or coolant but as far as I know it's literally water from a flood so all right 700 r4s the front to rear lubrication seal this is made out of a hard plastic hard plastic I think I saved one of a 4L60E here's the one from the 4L60E soft rubber and yes they are different can you interchange them I guess you could use this on that but I will, I will not use this on a uh, you know on a 700 R4 and it does have to do with uh, with the hole the loop hole on the output shaft I'm gonna put these two drums to the side so I already got my uh, forward sun gear out which goes right there get that out of the way and you know what I think I'm gonna lower you guys a little bit I think you guys are way too high let me a tripod damaged a little bit let's see the gears kind of damaged all right I think I'm gonna go all the way down all right let me get you guys up oh come on now right there right there all right Now I don't know if uh, it's affecting my audio when, while I was moving that or not, any scratchiness or anything like that, just disregard that. I mean, I'm trying to put you guys in a good position here so that you guys can see what's going on in there. All right, so we got our output shaft snap ring that we need to remove. We got to look for the opening, and I think the opening is right there. I'm going to position myself, I'm right-handed, so the pliers in my hand is going to be in the way. Oh, let's see here, man. Come on now. Get you guys closer. Yep, you need to go up a little bit. Go up, 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 up. Yeah, there you go. All right. Zoom in. All right. Let's zoom a little bit more. Oh, man. I'm going to be in the way. All right. So I'm going to position it down where I can see it where is it all right yeah I think I can see it I'm gonna see if I can go this way it's gonna be very uncomfortable for me but I think I'm gonna be able to pull through and yeah they like to move when you put the pliers on it they like to move there we go pop right out here it is. I'll put shafts in that brain. Well, because I'm zoomed all the way in. All right. And also, if you can put it on the magnet. I mean, 
All right, let's zoom out. Zoom out. All right. Oh. Forward spread. It depends on how you hold this. This, this was inside the fall. I mean, the input drum. I forgot to mention this. I just seen it right here on the bench. All right. If you put, if you hold it from the center, it's going to turn counterclockwise to you. So just be careful on how you hold it. Because a lot of people say, okay, it, to me it's turning counterclockwise, but to me it's turning clockwise. Did you just see that? Why is it turning clockwise from here and then counterclockwise from here? And then you look at the manuals and it tells you how, I mean, which way it turns, but then you hold it, you hold it wrong, and it's turning the other way. So the way I always do it, I, put, I stick my hand in there, and I hold it, like this, and it's going to turn towards me, counterclockwise, like that. You hold it like that. All right, capiche? All right, so you won't get confused. Because if you hold it like this, you're like, oh my God, it's turning the other way around. Yeah. You'll go nuts, man. <laughs> All right. Snap ring. This snap ring, I always put it back so I won't lose it. So once I take the little crown off and get my snap ring, I stick it back in there so I won't lose it. It's, I, know where it I know where it is. So once I need it, I'll put it back on. All right. Always check your race in good shape this is the outer race and what do you see a new sprag so yeah it was built it was built right now i'm all sweaty and all slippery and can't get this part of the sprag out but anyway check the inner race you can see the inner race is nice and shiny you have no grooves on it you see grooves it's gone this is a new sprag you, it's a double cage sprag do I have a single cage? Yeah, I have a single cage down here. See the difference? Single cage sprag. This will flip easier than this one. This one is more heavy duty. Borg Warner makes these. I think there's another company making them too. Uh, but I, I usually use Borg Warner because they're a good brand and they're always on hand. I mean, they're always there. Uh, but yeah. Uh, this might be a Borg Warner one. I don't see any markings on it, but but it is a new sprag and it's a double cage. So put that to the side. All right. So now that we have our snap ring from our output shaft to a forward planet snap ring out, let's go ahead and take our forward forward or front planet assembly. The front planet hub to sun shell washer comes out and this is in real good shape I actually have a back one uh, when I was doing that 4L60 uh, differences video uh, I was showing the difference between the bearing and the washer type and that washer was called completely gone and I mean if you want to see how bad they get you can go back watch watch that video and you'll see it forward planet hub bearings always load them as hard as you can i'll show you that video that i'm going to make that video on it capture bearing you cannot change this bearing this bearing goes out you gotta replace the whole planet you use your sun gear and you press on it you i mean you get a feel for it pinions the make sure that you don't have Side, uh, side wobble on the pinions. If you have side wobble on it, the pinion shaft is worn and you need to replace it. It's in real good shape. All right, let's take our sun shell off. Sun shell is in real good shape. One thing about 700R4 sun shells, I've never, ever, ever, ever seen a 700R4 sun show broke or worn for that matter well worn you might but broken no i don't know if back in the 80s they were making them from a different type of material or what was going on but not on a 700 4l60 started doing that so here is where i'll put this to the side a little bit 
you can see it because I brought you guys a little bit up and now when I'm close to you guys uh, I have to bring you down but I'm all oily I'm contaminating my camera over there you will see that it'll blossom out it'll blossom out like that you know on the performance vehicles especially on trucks trucks with a 6.0 or uh, with the high cam or whatever in the high stock converter and they do a lot of street racing and stuff like that I mean you'll see the reverse drum you know blossom blossom out when they blossom out like that they also are barely catching to the sun shell and I mean you can create a lot of problems so always check it for uh, blossoming and of course you know for warpage on the reverse drum itself. So you check those two areas of the drum. I have a beast sunshine. We're going to put a beast sunshine on that. That we can use it for something else. I mean, whatever. All right. Go ahead and take our snap ring out. And I'm going to do the same zoom in. I don't like zooming in, but let's go ahead and zoom in. Zoom in. All right. I think I need to get another light position over here. Let's see what I can do here. Just hold that thought, hold that thought. Hold that thought. Let me see if I can get get you guys a little bit more more light. How can I do this thing? Uh, I think that's good. Going all the way high on the light. Yeah. All right. So I got two lights now going in there, I think. Now let's go ahead and take the center support snap ring off and remember this all right now i need to go up on the camera now hell you man all right go up on the camera go left there we go and that up You see, I think we can. So here's the snap ring. So that cutout, you're gonna hold it with that cutout, and then you're gonna pull out like that. See that? Go a little bit more to your right. Same thing. Pull out. Go all the way around. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out so you can see a little better what I'm doing here. All right. Now that you already saw the close up. All right. Zoom out, zoom out. And that's it. That easy. It's that easy, man. Alright, now. Zoom all the way out. Oh, not the other way. Alright, let's see. So I have no helpers doing this so I do all the filming myself I do everything myself here so just bear with me a little bit all right so I'm gonna get my snap ring pliers and on the uh, anti-clunk spring I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get it in this location you can't see it and I'm just gonna go and hit my, the back of my bench just to pop it out I want to pop the center support out there we go you can use a hammer and tap it to the back or you can use the back of the bench uh, but you tap it out now since we have a reluctor ring on the output speed sensor where's my hammer well this should come out nice and easy it's a 700 or 4 the 4l60 they get real hard let me see i don't know what i did to my hammer put it away no where is it where is that thing at let's use this one Use the back of your hammer, pop your output shaft off. Now, here's the output shaft. 
Remember the seals, the two seals, uh, from the seals from the front to the back. You has to do something with the loop hole. And I can't remember which way, if you go wrong, it'll touch the loop hole and the loop hole will tear that seal up. So always use 700 R4 with the 700 R4. I'll push that for 700 R4, of course, has a uh, worm track right here or worm gear. This is what turns your governor. Or L60Es don't have that. So keep that in mind. Oh man, I need some more water. It's too hot in here. All right, let's continue taking stuff apart. Reverse or rear planet sun gear. This one, uh, the bushing, we are gonna upgrade this bushing with a Sonex extra wide bushing. It's gonna have more support on the, on the gear itself. And also, sometimes it wears from here and it's gonna cover more so that you can reuse this, but see there's no wear on this uh, hub right here. This is where the sun gear rides. So there's no issues here. But with a wider bushing, it's gonna go all the way to the top over here. With a wider bushing, you're gonna have more support. Those are some necessary upgrades that I think these units should have. Now you have the uh, sun shell to center support a plastic four tap washer. Sometimes it gets a bit very brittle and it breaks. It's always recommended to put a new one on it. Let's go ahead and take our center support out. I'm gonna leave that clutch up in there. So the center support, you have a one-way roller clutch. It's not a sprag, it's a roller clutch. It turns counterclockwise and it locks to the clock. Always take it out. Take your uh, inner race out. Inspect it for wear. It's looking in good shape. Sometimes you can just shake this like this and if rollers fall out, your uh, accordion springs are worn out. But Borg Warner makes one that it actually has extra material around it on this side on this area and it protrudes out a little bit more it covers more of the inner race and i mean that's a real good upgrade borg warner borg warner one-way roller clutch all right let's take our rear planet out and our low reverse frictions and as you can see the frictions look brand new like they, they've been just installed I mean, they look new, but remember, it has water. Why would a man have water on that thing? You cannot use them. Same thing on these bearings. Make sure that you don't feel uh, any pits. I mean, you have that little noise, but it's good because I'm putting a load on it. All right, so these bearings are all good. All the bearings came out good. Same thing on the rear planet. Side wobble. Making sure that the pinion shafts are not worn out. And they are good. Check this area too where the uh, friction spline on, onto the planet. Yep, got some evidence of water. That doesn't mean it's no good. I mean, you can still reuse this piece. There's nothing wrong with it. Our anti-clunk spring. This is the one that I use the pliers to kind of put a, release the load on the center support to the case to uh, get the center support out. Because sometimes you'll have a little bit of wear in the case and uh, it's hard to come out. Or it's just hard to come out because the, the center support is loaded to one side. It has some preload on it. All right, so I'm going to get my uh, low reverse spring compressor. But before I go get that, because I forgot to get it before filming. We'll go ahead and pop the servo out. Let's, let's see what's in it. Let's see what's in here. Always put your hand on top because once you hit this, it's going to squirt some fluid. Get a screwdriver. It's harder when the case is empty. So you 
pop the snap ring out, put it to the side. Always get it as out as I can. I rotate it like this and it pops out. I always, this is all I use, just 45 angle picks. That's all I use. Stretch the O-ring like this. You're making the O-ring thinner so that the cover, the cover will pass and it'll pass through. You stretch it so it gets thinner, it goes through. Well, locking the accumulator to make a firm one too, but you still have the factory servo in it. I think this needs to be upgraded to a Corvette servo. Being on a pickup truck, it has 20s or 22s. I'm not sure what type of wheels it's got. So the truck really does need them. All right. I think I talked about this on one of my uh, videos. I think it was a K070 and K0136 uh, superior, both items. And I talk about the uh, parking uh, cup plug. I want to go from the parking uh, rod back there. Uh, comes on the superior, or not on the superior, on the precision overhaul kits. And you use those cup plugs, you take the, the check ball, uh, a capsule that goes in here, and then you just plug the case to it. We can leave it as it is. This is third clutch exhaust. We can leave it as it is, or we can take this plug off and put a K070, no, it's a K0136 superior item. It's a directioner, directional check valve that goes in there. It replaces the cup plug, or it replaces the, the ball capsule that originally lives there. And all three are very good. Uh, if, this is just my opinion. If you're gonna reuse the capsule with the check ball in it, there's a Sonex part that goes on top of it, use that. Or you can remove the capsule and then put the K0136 from Superior and use that as a standalone. Or you can always do that as well. It's just a matter of opinion, matter of taste or whatever you want to use. All three methods work but never leave the original one in there it wears out it'll cause problems all right where you at where did i put that thing i used it not too long ago and it's over here all right Need to look for the uh, snap ring opening so that I can position my case to get my pliers in there. I'm gonna go this way. I think the opening is right here. Yeah, it's right there. All right. Get my low reverse uh, clutch spring compressor in there position it in a way that I'm going to be able to get my hand in there with the pliers. Start compressing that thing and it looks like it's warped a little bit. There we go. I did not want it to go down. So we might have an issue getting that snap ring out. All right. Get my pliers in there now. My big head is in the way in the camera now, but I need to look in there. I mean, it would be a cool if I can look through your screen and not put my stick my head in there, but that is not possible. All right, so I got my snap ring out. Now I got to get my tool out. If it feels like if it gets caught on the snap ring groove, don't take your tool out and get your own screwdriver and position it. But I can see it already past that groove. There we, there we got our return spring, low reverse return spring. I always put the snap ring on, on the spring itself like that just to hold it. Now, we're going to use compressed air and we're going to pop that piston out. 
All right. I'm going to stand it up like this. And yeah, let me get my camera dirty more. Get you guys up. Right there. Zoom in. Alright, lock you right there. Okay. We're gonna stick some air through this hole right here. To this right here. And blow air through it using a air nozzle like this and pop it out there we go it's out it is out man zoom out zoom out zoom out okay so there we have it tear down on a uh, 700 r4 all right this is going to be part one or the beginning of the video i might just decide to put part one and two together as one or i might just cut this right here and uh, do part one and then do part two we'll see how it goes all right well my name is Hiram. you know what to do click the like and subscribe and all of them good things Leave your comments down below. Uh, sometimes I'm real, real busy that I cannot get to your comments or read them or whatever, but uh, leave them there anyways on any little break I get, which is hard to do. Uh, I'll try responding the most that I can. All right, guys. Until the next one or after a commercial or whatever, you know. All right.